Hi everyone, I'm Yi Xinhu, a PhD student at New York University. Today, I would like to introduce a brand new method that can generate tetrahedral meshes robustly and efficiently. In many cases, we need a nice volumetric representation for an object, because, for example, we may want to simulate a physical object for collision tests in manufacturing where we need its volumetric representation. Tetrahedral mesh is the most common way to represent the volume of a 3D object. Tetrahedral meshing is a practice to generate tetrahedral meshes, or TET meshes in short. It takes as input the surface of an object and uses tetrahedral to fill in the interior space of the surface and output a tetrahedral mesh with the input surface preserved. However, tetrahedral meshing is not an easy task. It has been a hard problem for a long time. One of the main reasons is the input surface in the real world is not perfect. Like the example shown here, this is a triangle surface mesh that consists of around 31 million faces. If we zoom in, we can see the surface is full of self-intersections. Believe it or not, this model takes around two weeks of manual work to clean it up in its current pipeline. Know that it's really common that introducing artifacts on the surface during the design procedure. So a robust tetrahedral mesh algorithm should be able to handle imperfect real-world input. We tested a collection of popular tetrahedral mesh algorithms on Thinking 10K dataset, which contains 10,000 real-world surface meshes, and plot out the success rate of each method. The definition of success here is the method outputs a TED mesh within 3 hours using less than 32 GB memory. As we can see in the plot, except the most recent method, TED Wild, on the right, the other methods has low success rate and are thus impossible to be used in automatic batch processing pipeline. These methods can be categorized into three groups. The first is the learning based methods, which can be faithful to the input surface but can easily over-refine or fail if the input contains self-intersections or other problems. Grade-based methods can achieve higher robustness but struggles in preserving features in the input. Envelope-based methods allow the surface changing and being optimized within certain distance from the input and thus are way more robust and can produce high-quality output. However, it's slow due to the usage of exact numbers which is time-consuming in computation. So we propose a new method, FTETWILD, which is not only robust, automatic, able to produce high-quality output, but also fast. The first three features are achieved by using envelope-based mesh optimization. The efficiency is achieved by novel triangle insertion along with the floating-point construction. Now let's take a look at the pipeline of our method. The pipeline of FTETWILD consists of two stages. The first stage takes as input a triangle soup and inserts the input triangles into a background mesh. The second stage applies envelope-based mesh improvement to optimize the quality of the TET mesh and output a valid tetrahedral mesh with input conformed or approximated within an envelope. Users can control the envelope size. In the end, Users can choose to fill out the elements outside of the surface. In the first stage, triangle insertion, we first build a background mesh, which is the TET mesh of a box a bit larger than the object. And then we insert input triangles into the background mesh in a random order. During the insertion, we always maintain a valid TET mesh. For easier understanding, I will explain the insertion in 2D, and that would be inserting a segment into a triangle mesh. On the left is a triangle mesh. We want to insert the segment highlighted in red into the mesh. The first step is to find all cut-through triangles of the segment marked in orange. Here we use exact predicates for checking intersections, which ensures that no cut-through triangles would be missed. Then we compute the intersection of the line spanned by the input segment and the cut-through triangles. The blue triangles are neighboring triangles that intersects with the spanned segment. The intersection segments are marked in yellow, 
We call these intersection segments covering edges, since the directed distance from any point on the input segment to the covering edges are smaller than certain threshold, delta. In this case, delta is numerical precision of floating point numbers. For maintaining a valid triangle mesh, we need to subdivide and re-triangulate the affected triangles marked in orange and blue. Knowing which edges has intersection uniquely define the connectivity of new triangles. Here we use a table-based method to get the new connectivity within the subdivided triangles. Since a triangle has three edges, we can use a three-bit code for indicating which edge is cut or intersected. If no edge is cut, the code value is zero. If edge E1 is cut, for example, the code value turns to two. In 2D case, there are six valid codes. One code may correspond to multiple ways of connectivities. In this case, we pick the one with higher geometric quality. While the 2D case is simple, the 3D case is more complex, and there are 41 valid codes. Without considering permutation, the edge cut configurations can be categorized into six groups. For more details, please refer to our paper. Let's go back to our 2D example. After getting the covering edges, we want to preserve the endpoints of the input segment. Usually, the endpoints would be naturally preserved after the neighbors of the segment are inserted. But it's not always the case. For example, the segment may have no neighbor. In this case, we need to explicitly preserve the endpoints, that is, compute the intersection of the endpoints and the covering edges, marked in red. Then we can use the pre-measured table-based method to re-triangulate this region. Now we finished inserting the segment. However, what I just described is ideal case. In real case, the insertion could introduce tiny triangles that could block the later insertion. So we add a snapping step before we compute the intersection to avoid generating too many tiny elements. For example, the vertex V of the cut-through triangles has distance to the segment smaller than our snapping threshold delta. We first try move V to the segment. Since the mesh changes, we refine the cut-through triangles and compute the intersection marked in yellow. Modifying the mesh could invert elements and thus make the mesh invalid. Another way of doing snapping is marking the vertex V as on the segment. That is, we change the shape of input segment. This is safe as long as the snapping threshold delta is smaller than the envelope size. Since the input segment is changed, we may need to expand the cut-through triangles to make sure the distance from the segment to the covering edges is smaller than delta. With expanding cut-through triangles, we get correct covering edges. For more details about snapping, like expanding the cut-through triangles, please refer to our paper. Overall, snapping makes it more likely to insert input segments. But even with snapping, it's still possible that some input segments are unable to be inserted. For these segments, we will try to insert them during the next stage, mesh improvement when the mesh quality gets better and the insertion gets easier. We try to insert them every three iterations of mesh improvement. It's real that input segment cannot be inserted in the end. Based on our experiment on 10,000 models, this does not happen. The second stage is envelope-based mesh improvement. We use four local operations for mesh improvement. They are edge splitting, edge collapsing, face swapping, and vertex smoothing. In this step, we minimize the conformal AMIPS 3D energy of the mesh. We use the same mesh improvement method introduced in Tedwell's paper. Please refer to this paper for more details. One interesting thing we found is that the AMIPS energy evaluation is unstable in floating points, especially when the value is large. The J in this formula is the Jacobian of the transformation from a regular tetrahedron to the current tetrahedron. In theory, the energy of certain tetrahedron should not change when we enumerate the verses of the tetrahedron. But it's not true 
when it's evaluated in following points. Here is an example. Tetrahedron T has high energy, and the coordinates of its vertices are shown as below. When we re-enumerate its vertices and compute the energy, we get completely different output. For example, if we enumerate vertices as v1, v2, v3, v4, the energy value is 5 times 10 to the 10. However, if we enumerate vertices as v2, v3, v4, v1, the value gets to 2 times 10 to the 11. Similarly for other enumerations. The difference is around one order of magnitude. According to our observation, the difference could up to two orders of magnitude. This could block local operations and result in over-refinement. So here we give a simple solution, but not perfect in theory. We compute the cube of the energy in rational for the elements whose energy is larger than 10 to the 8. Since such elements usually takes a small portion, so the effect on timing is negligible. Here is a 3D example for showing how the unstable energy computation blocking the mesh improvement. The left is the input, the middle is the output tet mesh with standard floating point energy evaluation. In the close-up, we can see that the mesh is over-refined densely, but with improved energy evaluation on the right, the over-refinement is resolved, and the final time and output elements are much less. After mesh improvement, we get our output with input approximated within an envelope. In the end, users can choose to fill out outside elements. We provide two options. The first option is winding number, which requires correct input surface orientation. The other option is flat field, which does not require input surface to be well oriented, but does require the input to be close. Besides filtering, we extend this work to apply Boolean operation on non-positive winding number surfaces. For example, we have an input consisting of two surfaces, blue and orange, after the region is triangulated. For the blue surface, we know that the elements in the red region is inside and the elements in the green region is outside by using winding number. And the same for the orange surface. So for example, if we want to compute the union of these two surfaces, we can just extract the surface of the tetrahedral inside the blue surface or inside the orange surface. Here is a 3D example. If we want to do Boolean operation between object A and B, we can directly input these two meshes to FTET wild. If we want the union result, FTET wild would output the elements inside surface A or B. Similarly for intersection, FTET wild would output the elements inside surface A and B. For difference, FTET wild outputs the elements inside surface A but not inside surface B. Of course, our Boolean operation can also be applied on multiple objects and operations at once, like this classic example. Overall, FTET wild paired with this filtering allows us to compute robust Boolean operations between imperfect geometries and, in the meanwhile, produce a high-quality volumetric mesh with clean surface, although it's still slower than other Boolean methods that only manipulate the surfaces. Now, let's take a look at some results. We tested our method on a large dataset, Thinking 10K, that contains 10,000 real-world surface meshes using default parameters, and our success rate achieves 99.97%. With more resources given, FTET World can achieve 100% success rate. Know that FTET World uses less than 500 megabytes for most models in the 10K dataset. Here is the running time comparison between TetWild and FTETWild on the whole thing in 10K dataset. The plot shows the percentage of input still unprocessed after a certain period of time. For example, after one minute, TetWild still has around 68% of the input unprocessed, while FTETWild only has 13%. And if we compute the average runtime, FTETWild is seven times faster than TetWild. Know that the mesh size of the 10K output produced by these two methods are quite similar as shown in the histogram of output mesh size.
We also compared our method with similarly-based methods that are known to be fast. The plot shows the comparison of Tetgen, Seagull, Tetwild, and FTetwild on a reduced Thinking 10K dataset. The reduced dataset contains only the models where the four methods all succeed. On this dataset, FTetwild successfully tetrahedralized 96% models within one minute, and the average runtime is only 18.5 seconds, which is comparable with the Delani based methods. Since the output of TetWild has higher quality than most of the other methods, here we only compare the quality of the output of TetWild and FTetWild based on the 10K dataset using five different quality measures. The left is the plot of TetWild and the right is the plot of FTetWild. These plots show the output of these two methods has similar AMIPS energy, similar smallest dihedral angle, volume to edge ratio, aspect ratio, and a similar radius to edge ratio. If you are interested in the quality comparison of more methods, please refer to the paper of Ted Wild. Let's now take a look at a concrete example. This surface mesh on the left has crazy self-intersections and fails with all other methods except TetWild and our method. It takes around 17 hours with TetWild, but with FTetWild, it only needs 56 minutes and the output quality is pretty nice. We also tried the extreme challenging example we showed in the very beginning, which takes around two weeks of manual work to clean up but FTetWild takes only 55 minutes to generate a nice TED mesh with clean surface, as shown on the right. The other challenging example is shown on the left with self-intersected beams, fine features, and in the output uh, on the right, the self-intersections are all gone and the thin beams are preserved. This example shows Boolean operation between two shapes. We extract the volume of shape 2 from the volume of shape 1 and get a tight mesh for the pipe carved in the internal. We can use this tight mesh for Stokes fluid simulation. On the right, we let the fluid go through the pipe from left to right and show the streamlines. With all these nice features shown before, FTAT World also has limitations. First, it handles sharp features in a soft way and cannot preserve input surface exactly. Second, FTetWild always produces a valid mesh in flowing point but might not insert all input triangles. Differently, TetWild always inserts all triangles but might not produce a flowing point mesh. Uh, but for these two methods, we didn't find any failure case on the 10K dataset we tested. Now, let me give a short summary. First, FTetWild is robust and verified on 10,000 models. Second, it's fully automatic and there is no complex parameter tuning. Third, FTetWild can produce high quality output. Finally, it's fast. In the end, I would like to thank NYUHBC team. Also, thanks for all kinds of fundings that support our work. The source code of FTetWild is public and free to use you can scan the QR code here. We also have a Python wrapper of AppTetWild. You can install it via Conda. That's it. Thank you.